Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Now let's have a brief introduction of S3 and how to use it. First, let's open it and add a new project. We can save it on the desktop or other places. Here we save it into desktop. Now we can see the user interface of the HighRender S3. The top is the, is the menu. The left side is the media resource management zone, including input management and output control management. The middle is the stage zone. Signal previews and main outputs are here. The right side is the play status zone. Bottom left is the timeline zone. The bottom middle is the window setting zone or program setting zone. The bottom right is the property setting zone. HighRender S3 is a media server based on timeline mode and window mode operations. Let's see how to use it. First is to add local media source. Just right click at the media management zone and choose the local media source that you want to play. You can directly select or you can also drag the whole file into the zone. Then we need to add the local display. That is our connected display. We can click the Add Local Display. Here we can see the connected displays, including their number and their resolutions. This reference is our connected display. The operation of timeline mode is same as our S2 software. So let's skip it and go to the window mode. We can do the settings here. Let's make it full screen first. Okay, first let's take a look at the keys. This key is to add window. And this key is for adding program. Every row is a window, and every column is each program. A window can be changed and overlay, and programs can be switched. There is a timeline layer below. It is used to add timeline for the programs. Now let's make add some more programs. Then we can do the settings for the windows. Just add windows and change the parameters for each window. Suppose now I want to make a full screen win in one window. We can select one window first, rename it. Let's say the name 123. It represents my full screen window and now we set the property of it from the bottom left make it into 120 by 1080 and then after every signal that drag into this window it will be played in the resolution of 1920 by 1080 to the main output which is full screen here then we can make a three window layout same as before choose one window and change the property of each window. Suppose we want to separate a screen into three parts with left and right side are 500 by 1080, middle side is 920 by 1080. So we need to set the three windows separately. For the first one, 
we relay it to one. And drag the layer onto the zero zero. And then for the second, we change the resolution to nine twenty. And drag into the middle. Same we do for the third window. Now three windows are set. Left, five hundred by ten eighty, middle, and right. When we want to make a program with three windows, we just need to drag the signals in. And now let's have a look. Okay, now we have two programs. One is one signal full screen. The other is three signals, three windows. If you want to make other three, three windows, we can just drag the signals into these three windows. And then a new three window program is made with the same layout. We can also make a new full screen program here. Say if you want to make other layouts, we can add more windows. Select the window and change its parameters like position, size, or anything. Here, we can set a new one with just two windows. We can select one window and change its width into 96 into 1080 and drag into left and the other one we do the same now we drag in the signals we can see two signals are playing side by side in one output same we can add more programs and drag signals into different set windows and new programs will be made. This is how to make new program by window mode. The next, let's come to how to do the switching for all these programs. There are many ways to do the switching. The first way is just click the play icon of the program and it will play. The second way is to use the arrow key on the keyboard. Just go to menu, go to file, and we can see there is an arrow key setting here. We just click and OK. Now we can switch directly by pressing the arrow key on the keyboard. The other way is to set a shortcut key for each program. Let's set a shortcut key for program 2. For example, make it into key Z. And the other program, we make it into key X. Then we can go to the program zone and press the shortcut key on the keyboard to do the switching. It also supports HC64 controller or media MIDI controller to do the switching. We can go to media resource management zone, select input and add MIDI controller, rename it, let's say the name is QQ. If we click learn and push the T bar of MIDI controller, the channel and controller value will be added here automatically. Here we do not connect any MIDI controller, so we put the menu value manually. 
Now we can connect. Suppose program six and its property. We change the trigger into QQ. Now if we push the T bar, it will store or play. This is how to do the switching through MIDI controller. It can also support automatic, automatical switching. That is, when one program is finished, it will directly switch to the next program automatically. First, we select the first program and its property, in its play mode, we can select drum to the next program or drum to other program. We can select the program names that you want to drum to. Suppose I select program 8 here. Now, let's take a look. Just now, we set the property of program 3. You can see, after it finish, it will switch to program A automatically. This is automatic switching. Okay, that's all for the switching. After program and switching method are made, we need to enable the main output. We just need to go to the stage edit, double click, and click open. And then right click, select connect. Then the program will be go into the main output.